Before we get on the global scale of things, I've been asked a lot about what's going on with the Texas border, and I do believe that this plays a part in that as well. Now, sometimes I like to wait before giving detailed opinions on things. Um, as you guys know, sometimes when it comes to these things, like I haven't really talked much about the Texas border. I've kind of gave a quick opinion where it's like, oh, I think there's something else going on with that. But sometimes I like to take a stop, take a look at the information that I can find, think about it before I open my mouth. Um, and so sometimes it takes me a minute before I get to opinion about some things, but let's talk about the Texas border here, shall we? Now, let's take a look at Newsweek on this because the headline is interesting. It says civil war warnings grow over Texas border standoff. Then you got the wonderful picture of, of Abbott and Biden uh, side by side there. Let's look at this thing. It says the conflict between the Biden administration and Texas governor uh, Greg Abbott over the southern border has sparked some con concerns about civil war. Tensions between the politicians escalated this week after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in favor of Biden's decision to require Texas to remove razor wire and other barriers constructed along to border uh, along. Wow, that's a typo on Newsweek along the border to curb immigration. There we go. Uh, fire the editor of this piece. Uh, the federal government raised environmental and humanitarian concerns about the deterrent. Abbott defied the ruling in multiple statements, including in a post on Twitter that read, this is not over. Keep going. It says, meanwhile, some Democrats, including Texas Representative uh, Joaquin Castro, uh, have urged Biden to federalize Texas National Guard to stop Abbott to find a ruling. That is definitely something to keep an eye on if they try to federalize the natural, uh, National Guard. Um, now, writing on Twitter, some commentators have raised the possibility of civil war. Newsweek contacted representatives for Abbott and Biden by email to comment on the story. Internet personality Terrence Williams, I don't know who that is, but apparently has a uh, 1.7 million followers. So civil war is coming soon in all caps. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Two things when I get this. Two things um, as I go through this, it's, that's not the only article I read. I go through a bunch of other things, both right and left, neutral. I just try to get as much information as I can and then take the approach of unbiasedness, I guess you can say. But two things. If it's in the mainstream media, there's a reason why. And the mainstream media is really pushing the phrase civil war. Now, when you have all these mainstream media places pushing this term along with everybody else talking about it, and then the movie coming out in spring, Civil War, there is a reason why they're pushing this. There is a propaganda, an agenda, a, a, a psyop, something behind it. Now, whether it'll actually happen or not, I don't know. I'm not a fortune teller. Uh, I don't go to Bethel. Uh, Hogwarts school of learning all that stuff. Um, but there's something whenever they're there, they, they push something in the media. There's always a reason why now, secondly, the psychological warfare aspect of this is off the charts. So we talked about what's going on with the term civil war, but they will take a situation that is indeed bad. There's me and my wonderful uh, words again, my vocabulary, and use it to bring about the next stage of their plan by using people to stand behind another evil that is, uh, that is, uh, I can't even read my own handwriting, that is uh, showing that it's something good. Okay. You guys know me. I like to kind of dive when it comes to what they're trying to do on the psychological level, because we are in this generation of warfare where it's psychological warfare, it's mental warfare, the games being played on the mind. And I think this is really what's going on. So I'll try and break this down to explain it. So we all agree. We all agree. The immigration invasion is bad, right? We all agree with that. We all agree that what the federal government is doing is bad, right? We're all on the same page. We all agree with this. Okay. Now, we agree 
that what Abbott and Texas are showing is good, right? We all agree with that? So immigration invasion, bad. The federal government is doing bad. What Abbott and Texas are showing, good. I think I think we're all in agreement on that. But if the feds and Abbott are on the same team and the goal is to get the people and other states to back Abbott, even if it brings a physical fight, you've been played with no actual out from it. What do I mean by that? Let's put it even simpler. If you back Abbott, possibility of physical fight or war. If you do nothing, the invasion continues. No matter what, you've been deadlocked into a lose-lose situation. You've been played. Now, there's no winning, but because what Abbott is supposedly showing is what is right, which we agree that what they're showing is right. I mean, that's what I started off this thing off with. We're being hooked into some into just another evil. Both are evil, but we're being deadlocked into a situation where we always lose and there's no out. You see how that can be played and put into perspective? That's been done quite often throughout history. It's really been done throughout history. Now, I know after all that, I'm going to get some people saying, what if Abbott isn't part of the bad guy? You know, I've talked about in the past how Abbott is a WEF contributor, not just on the page, but he is a WEF contributor. He is also a major profiteer from the illegals and the Colony Ridge development. I've talked about all that stuff. You can find the video on my channel. If that's not enough, how about making deals with the devil, shall we? This is from 2020. And it's from Greg Abbott himself. And he says, busy day at the World Economic Forum in Davos. I met with Secretary Wilbur Ross to discuss the USMCA and China trade China trade deals. Texas will be a winner. And that's him with Wilbur Ross. You guys don't remember. Y'all remember good old Wilbur Ross, right? He's such a stand-up guy. Well, he's the king of bankruptcy, who is the Rothschilds deal maker. He worked with the Rothschilds bank to get people out of bankruptcy. When you do deals with the mafia, you're in the mafia at that point. You owe them. There's no getting out of it. Like what's was it from was it Godfather 2? When I thought that I was out, they pulled me back in. You just can't get out. And he's also the same guy that helped Trump get out of bankruptcy and was also a part of his administration. And we can see that right there. So Abbott, WEF contributor, making money from the illegals crossing the border, uh, making deals with the Rothschilds. Yeah, he's definitely one of the good guys, right? Guys, I know I get some people saying just because they're connected to Wilbur Ross doesn't mean that they're bad. Again, dive into what happens when you get into deals with these families, these names, the Carnegies, the Rockefellers, uh, the Morgans, uh, the Baruchs, uh, the Rothschilds. Dive into the history. If you don't play their game, you end up dead. Why don't you go ask some of the friends of the Clintons how that works? It's the same thing. You could replace the picture with Hillary Clinton sitting there making a deal with Abbott if you wanted to. Abbott is not a good guy. And he's going to do whatever he's told to do in order to keep his power and his money until they're done with them. Then they'll scoot them off. <laughs> it's funny. Inside joke if you if you know Abbott. But they'll just scoot them off and, and put in the next guy. It's how this works. This is the world that we're in. This is Satan's world. This is his area. And he's got people running it. 
And if you're not going to play ball, you're not either going to be put in that position in the first place, or if you're already in that position and you're against it, well, ask JFK how that worked out. That's not a shot at JFK. I'm just saying, ask him how that worked out. Just something to keep in mind. Now, Keeping on with this, I like this description from uh, a guy named Mark Slavo. He does work at the uh, SHTF plan website. It says, don't forget that neither Abbott nor Biden will be fighting each other physically during this war if it goes that far. Both sociopaths will require others to obey their commands and go to war for them. I think that just puts it ducky personally because that's exactly what's going on that is history repeating itself look at all the wars the ones who start it and are in on it they never have to go and, and fight no it's all everybody else the useless idiots or as harari would say the useless eaters they go and die for it as well to continue along the globalist agenda that they want personally my opinion, this Texas thing, this this border thing, yeah, it's a problem. I'm I'm fully there. But this is completely orchestrated, in my opinion. I don't know the outcome. I don't know exactly what they're looking for. I mean, from what we see, it looks like maybe they're trying to egg on this war. But again, I don't know what the, the actual plan is that they're going to do. Is there going to be a war? Is there not? I don't know. But I definitely think that there's a plan being played, a game being played on this. That's my opinion. My opinion. From what I have seen, the research I've done, and what I have looked at, that's my opinion. So, it's just another reminder that while being puppets themselves, Abbott and Biden, they are pulling the strings on the people as well. And another aspect of this does not sit right with me either. And that's this convoy called God's Army. Hmm. Something off about this. Um, coming from Business Insider, it says a convoy calling themselves God Army or God's Army plans to head to the Texas border to stop migrants from entering the U.S. Calling themselves God Army. Who do you think you are? The Blues Brothers? On a mission from Gat? Um, it says a convoy of hundreds of people plans to head to the Texas border. We've seen the news on that, obviously, to stop migrants from crossing into the U.S. From Mexico, the group called Take Our Border Back is, or uh, is organizing, there we go, on Telegram and now has more than 1,600 followers. Vice reported that one of the group's uh, organizers described them as God's army in a planning call. This is biblical mon monumental movement that's been put together by God, one organization said. I wonder if these are the same people connected to the reawakening tour. I know some people might think that's a joke, but I'm curious. Another said we are, uh, we are besieged on all side of the dark forces of evil. I agree. Just... It's not the, 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 the besieged on all sides of dark forces of evil like you believe. And it goes on to say, and I saw this video so I can confirm it. I'm not going to show the video because of where it comes from. I'll get banned immediately. So Pete Chambers, a group organiza uh, organizer, has claimed he was a Green Beret. He explained the group's plans while speaking to the right-wing conspiracist, <laughs> Alice Jones. That's good old business insider for you, right? Uh, on his InfoWars show on Thursday. That's what Green Berets do. Unconventional warfare is our bread and butter. Now we're doing domestic internal defense, Chambers said. Uh, what gets us to the enemy quickly is to find, fix, and finish, uh, exploit, analyze, and disseminate, Chambers said, referring to a military process. That's what we did in Syria when we took out the ISIS really quick. Um, again, I... When I see stuff like this, I get it, but there's something really funky. Calling yourself God's army, it's biblical, dark forces of evil, and then you got this guy who claims to be a Green Beret. There's nothing that backs that up that I could see, and he's talking about this, this military plan, 
and everything. You add that again, you're adding more fire to a, a haystack that's already soaked in kerosene. It just takes one ember to set that thing off. You get what I'm saying? I hope you get what I'm saying. You're just adding more to something and it hasn't fired off. I, we don't know if it will, but uh, just, I don't know. There's something really off about this. Um, again, I'm, I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to sit here and say, I think there's a war that's going to happen or there's not, because I don't know. I'm not going to speculate on that, but what I'm seeing is something that stinks. We got bad actors, false flags, orchestration, anything can happen at this point. And the whole thing screams theater. So again, what comes of it? I don't know, but as of now, our country has a split between states that could erupt into a two liter war suspending the election indefinitely. So what I'm talking about here is if something was to kick off, you've got a split. What is it? Is it 26, 25, 26 states behind backing Texas now? Can't remember exactly. I'm sure you guys know uh, for sure. But you got half the country, states, that are backing Texas. You got the other half that are backing feds. If something was to kick off this year, you could have some type of thing where if they're trying to have an election or they'll stop it, you could have a leader coming up from the new Texas group and you could have the leader from the federal government and you got yourself election that's suspended indefinitely with a whole country going to war. That's something to think about, guys. Um, it's possible. It is possible. I don't tend to, because there's been calls for civil war before, and I just kind of, I was like, eh. But with the year that it is, with the convergence of things that we see going on, the actors that we see involved with this, it's a possibility. And if that was to happen, this would destroy America, taking it out of the picture for the day of the Lord. Which, when we look at end times Bible prophecy, America ain't in it. 